Zanshli. And now we're going to do some output questions using for loop in Java. So this video is specifically on the procedure like how do we use for loop when we have the code and we have to tell what will be the output of that code. So as we discuss the basic syntax of the for loop that we have initialization, conditions, statements and increment decrement. While solving the questions with for loop to find the output, this pattern, the order in which all these things are executed matters a lot. So you have to work on the basis of these steps only, step 1, 2, 3 and 4. So I'm showing you two examples in this video that how we get the output for a given for loop code. Like the first example is this, the question asked is what will be displayed in text area 1? after the execution of the following loop. Now here we have this for loop where we have int i is equal to 5, i less than equal to 25 and i is incremented by 5 every time. What are we doing inside the loop is we are setting some text in the text area and what do we set over here? We first get whatever is there in the text area plus we add a space plus we convert an integer value which we get after multiplying i with 2, we convert it to a string and concatenate with the existing value of the text area. So the meaning of this statement is that first read whatever is there in the text area, plus means join, join a space with it, then join the value of 2 into i with it. Now let's start how the code executes. Okay, the first thing is initialization. So i becomes 1. So initially i is not 1, sorry, 5. So here initially i gets a value 5. So i is 5. Then the condition is i less than equal to 25. Fine. So since i is 5 right now, we check if 5 is less than equal to 25. Yes, it is. It gives me true. That means we are supposed to get inside the loop over here. Right now the text area is blank. Blank plus 2 into i i is 5, so 2 into i gives me 10. So what I set in the text area is a number 10. So text area gets value 10 in it as a result. Then we go to the increment part, i plus equal to 5. i plus equal to 5, i was already 5, so 5 plus 5 becomes 10. So next value of i becomes 10. Then we check the condition, this condition again, i less than equal to 25. Yes, 10 is less than equal to 25. It's true. It's true. So, we have to execute this line again. As per that, it fetches the value of the text area 1, which is already 10, which we set in the last iteration, plus a space, plus 2 into i, that is 20. So, here plus is to join the strings. It's not adding the values. It's concatenating the strings. So, in my text area, I'll be having 10 space 20 now. Then it goes to the increment part, i plus equal to 5, i had 10, so it becomes 15, 15 less than equal to 25 is true, is true, and this time 2 into i is 30. So when this line gets executed, the text area already had 10, 20, concatenated by 30. So the new value of text area becomes 10 space 20 space 30. Then it increments 5 and i becomes 20, 20 less than 25 is true, 2 into i becomes 40. So the next value which is joined after the string is 40. So the text area has 10 space 20 space 30 space 40. i is incremented again by 5 becomes 25, 25 less than equal to 25 is true. This time the value joined will be 50. After that i increases again by 5 and i becomes 30. 30 less than equal to 25 is false. So we stop the loop and final output of this code will be 10 space 20 space 30 space 40 space 50 in the given text area. So this is how for loop works. Whenever you work this way, you consider initialization, condition, statements and increment, you'll always get the output in the proper manner. Let's take one more example. Now the question given is this, initially sum is 0, m is 4, i is 9, i greater than equal to 6, i minus minus, 
and then it is checking inside if i mod 3 is 0 that means if i is divisible by 3 we have to add the value of i in sum else if it is not divisible by 3 we have to decrease i from sum so this is the loop now what we have to do is we have to execute step by step like we did the earlier one. So initially your i is 9. Okay, so we start with the very first iteration where i is 9. 9 greater than equal to 6 is true. So the condition is this i greater than equal to 6. i is 9. 9 greater than equal to 6 gives me true. It will come inside the loop and here we are checking if i mod 3. i is right now 9. So 9 mod 3 equal to 0, yes, 9 is divisible by 3, it gives me 0, the remainder is 0. So it executes this line. When it executes this line, the right hand side thing is evaluated and stored in the left hand side variable. Sum was initially 0, 0 plus i is 9, so 0 plus 9 gives me 9, which is again stored back in sum. It will not go to the else part since the condition was true. So this part is simply skipped and we move on over here to the decrement part. Now it is i minus minus. i was 9, it is decreased by 1 and becomes 8. And then it checks whether 8 is greater than or equal to 6. Yes, 8 is greater than or equal to 6. It's true. It's true. Then it checks the if condition. If i mod 3, 8 mod 3 equal to 0 is false since it's not divisible by 3. So it goes to the else part and executes this line. Sum is equal to sum minus i. Sum was 9 in the previous iteration. So we are going to continue with the same value. Sum is 9. 9 minus 8 gives me 1, which is again stored in sum. So the new value for sum becomes 1. Then we go to the decrement part. It becomes 7. i becomes 7. 7 greater than or equal to 6 is true. Then it comes to the if thing, 7 mod 3 equal to 0 is false, 7 is not divisible by 3, it again comes to the else part. Now the previous value of sum was 1, 1 minus 7 gives us minus 6, so new value for sum becomes minus 6. Then it goes to the decrement part again, i becomes 6, 6 greater than or equal to 6 is true. When it comes to if 6 mod 3 equal to 0 is true because 6 is divisible by 3, then we execute this line. Now the previous value of sum is minus 6. Minus 6 plus 6 gives us 0. So sum again becomes 0. Then it goes to i minus minus, it becomes 5. 5 greater than or equal to 6 is false. So the loop stops. So at the end of the loop, the final value of variable sum is 0. We had a variable m over here which was 4. It is not used in the code anywhere. So you don't have to do anything with that. So the question is you have to tell the final value of sum after the execution of the code. So after the execution of the code my variable sum is 0. And how we got 0? By these iterations. Hope you understood how for loop works in giving the output. In case of any doubts, do write in the comment section. And if you found this video useful, do like it and share with your friends. And in case you have not subscribed the channel, subscribe it. Thank you.